Hi LEGO fans, it's time for more classic LEGO Harry Potter, and this time we're going back to 2002 for a set based on Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. Loads of people have asked me to review this set, and with the new version just days away, what better time to pay a visit to Little Whinging? The only problem is that this set is looking a little sorry for itself. I got this second hand, and clearly it spent way too much time in the sun. Just like human beings, LEGO can also turn orange when it's exposed to UV light. It's also super dusty, and I'm pretty sure most of that is the previous owner's sloughed off skin. I can't possibly show it to you like this, so today I'm going to be dismantling, cleaning, rebuilding, and reviewing set number 4728, Escape from Privet Drive, from LEGO Harry Potter! Before I review this set, we have some work to do. I'm going to give it a good clean, replace some missing parts, and try and do something about all the discoloured elements. You'll notice we've got more shades of grey than LEGO manufacture, some serious problems with the roof on the Ford Anglia, and medium blue sure isn't what it used to be. You can use hydrogen peroxide and UV light to fix some of these issues, but right now with the COVID-19 pandemic, hydrogen peroxide has become pretty pricey. Before we give this a good clean, we'll need to do a teardown. Here goes! Cleaning loose bricks is really simple, especially when you've got no stickered elements to worry about. I simply use a bowl of warm water, stir in some biological detergent such as Tide or Persil if you live in the UK. We then soak the bricks for a few hours, giving them the occasional stir. Drain off all the detergent, give them a good rinse, and then dry them off on a towel. I figured there was nothing to lose and soaked some of the more discoloured bricks in bleach. This particular type of bleach is based on hydrogen peroxide. I figured we might get some improvement, but in reality there was none. So now we have a nice clean pile of Lego bricks and the delightful smell of clean breeze. I'm going to go ahead and rebuild set number 4728, Escape from Privet Drive, and today this is going to be a 90 second speed build! And here is the completed 4728 Escape from Privet Drive from LEGO Harry Potter. Build time today was 50 minutes, but I was working from a PDF copy of the instructions and taking care to replace or reverse as many discoloured parts as I could. I even gave Ron and Harry a new pair of trousers each because frankly yellowing in that part of the body is probably not a good thing. 4728 Escape from Privet Drive is a 278 piece set released in 2002. That's the year Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets came out, and that would explain the Flying Ford Anglia. The 278-piece part count includes three minifigures. A HP025 Harry Potter with red shirt. He's exclusive to this set and is worth about $6. 
We also have an earlier HP006 Ron Weasley with blue sweater. He came out in 2001 and also appeared in the 4708 Hogwarts Express. I did an unboxing, speed build and review video of that set earlier in the year. Poor old Wonwon is only as valuable as Harry Potter at around $6. And finally we have the HP023 Uncle Vernon. At the time of filming in May 2020 this is the only Vernon Dursley minifigure. That changes in June 2020 when the 75968 4 Privet Drive set is released. Uncle Vernon also appears in the very obscure Harry Potter minifigure gallery part 2. I'm pretty sure that was only released in Japan. And he sells for about $7. We'll come back to the minifigures and take a very detailed look later in the video. We'll also be taking a look at the Flying Ford Anglia and I'll be showing you some tips and tricks for hiding those miscoloured bricks. Also later in the video we're going to be taking a look at every Flying Ford Anglia Lego has produced so far. There is another one coming out in June, but I think it's pretty much the same one we got with Hogwarts Whomping Willow. For now, let's start our journey back at 4 Privet Drive. Located in Little Whinging, which is in Surrey, England, just outside of London, 4 Privet Drive has been home to the Dursley family since Vernon and Petunia bought it in 1977. It's located in a cookie-cutter row of almost identical executive homes. We don't know much about the neighbours except for the Squib and Order of the Phoenix member Arabella Fig who lives across the street. She was also a witness for the defence when Harry Potter was detected using the Patronus charm in the presence of a muggle. In all honesty this looks nothing like Four Privet Drive, there's no garage for instance, but it is quite a nice looking building. We have decorative leaded windows and even some window boxes with some greenery. I don't recall any decorative stonework on the outside of Four Privet Drive, but this decorative stone panel definitely seems like something that the Dursleys would approve of. Very tasteful. For some reason in this Lego version, more than half of the property is only on one level. Here we have another leaded window complete with window box, and a front door in matching brown colour complete with a numbered plate which denotes this as Four Privet Drive. There's even a lantern to illuminate the number. The colours used in this build are quite unusual and can be difficult to replace. For example, most of the outside is in this dark orange colour. On the top of this single storey section we have a couple of rows of dark grey roofing tiles and a very small chimney with a chimney pot. These are purely decorative and will not keep the rain off Hedwig's head. The other section of Privet Drive is set on two floors and can be angled independently of the other parts of the building. It does make it easier for us to have a poke around inside. The interior of Fourth Privet Drive is a little bit confusing. Given that we get the Flying Ford Anglia, this can only be based on Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. For example, we find this neatly made bed in the cupboard under the stairs. This was Harry Potter's address when he was first invited to Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Uncle Vernon was a little bit spooked by that, and that's when Harry Potter was upgraded to Dudley's second bedroom. This hides a little secret. We can actually remove the stairs, and take a look underneath Harry Potter's bed. Inside we find some wizarding gear including a cloak covered in stars and a grey wand. Right next to the front door and at the bottom of the stairs we have some kind of skillet. I'm guessing this is some kind of range for cooking so maybe this is the kitchen. It's been a while since I lived in the UK but I'm pretty sure you can't have a kitchen at the bottom of the stairs. Also at the bottom of the stairs and next to the front door we have a coffee cup and some kind of sand green cylinder. On the other side of the stairs in what must be the hallway we have a black spider and a small table. On the table we have a couple of studs and a 1x2 printed tile. The 1x2 printed tile actually shows a rolled up bedroll. Maybe the Dursleys are going camping. At the top of the stairs, clearly not giving two hoots about our presence, it's that bloody pigeon! Hedwig is quite a lot different from the newer version of the owl element which came with custom printing. In fact, there's a new version of the Hedwig figure coming out for the 2020 sets. The upper floor of number 4 Privet Drive is no less confusing. This is where I would expect to see Harry's bed, but instead we have a small table on which you can find a clear goblet and a letter. This would seem to reference Harry's invitation to Hogwarts, which was of course in the first movie. Also up here we have a couple of books, one which is red and another one medium blue to match the car. Neither of these contain anything cool. Now of course you could argue that this may not be Harry's bedroom. Let me just debunk that theory for you. Proving once again that this set doesn't know which movie it belongs to, we have a neat action feature on the chimney. There are some more printed letter elements hidden away, and when you turn the chimney, the owl post arrives. 
Using the magical powers of gravity, we can make Hogwarts invitation letters fall from the sky. I really do find the interior of this full privet drive set rather disappointing. With that said, I think LEGO are going to make up for it with the new version that's coming out in June or August if you're in the USA. The house itself is a basic but attractive build and definitely a must for the true Harry Potter collector. But what also makes this desirable is the flying Ford Anglia. Okay, well it didn't exactly fly in, but you get the idea. I spent a good amount of time trying to make this look as good as possible, but as you can see there are still some discoloured parts of the car. I wasn't able to replace these doors easily and of course you can't turn them around. As you can see, the colour on the inside of the door is very different. In other areas of the car, I simply turn the parts around. You'll see here these look quite pristine, but on the other side, on the inside of the car, they're actually quite faded. This was simply a case of swapping the parts from one side to the other. With the hood, I just turned the plate around, enabling more of the original colour to show through. I'm not going to stop here, and I do plan on buying a bunch more parts from Bricklink to restore this to its former glory. The Flying Ford Anglia was actually an Anglia 105E Deluxe that was enchanted by Arthur Weasley to fly. It could also be made invisible to avoid attracting the attention of muggles. In fact, on the dashboard of the car, you may just be able to make out the invisibility booster. Just like the fourth generation Ford Anglia, which was manufactured between 1959 and 1968, the interior on the Lego version is pretty basic. There's a steering wheel, which should of course be mounted on the right, and a gear stick for the manual four-speed transmission. In keeping with cars of the time, the seating was bench style, and you can forget about seat belts. Being a small family car, you'd usually have seats in the back for the kids. That's not the case with this Lego model, but we do have somewhere to put a suitcase. There's also room for storage inside the discoloured trunk, or as we call it in Britain, the boot. Around the back we have tail lights, but no indicators, and a bumper which looks much better with new elements. The old elements were rather yellowed and replacing them was a no-brainer. Around the front, as well as a discoloured bonnet, we do have both headlights and indicator lights. There are also some really nice metallic chromed elements for the grill. The front windshield is nothing special, but around the back we have an inverted transclear piece which really helps to recreate the lines of the Ford Anglia. Disappointingly, the tyres on this car are way too rugged, and considerably wider than tyres you would find on a car in the 1950s and 60s. Braking distance was much less of a concern back then. LEGO does get the tyre selection right in later models, and we'll be taking a look at those later in the video. I'll also be sharing my thoughts on the new 4 Privet drive set. Before then, let's take a look at these minifigures. Harry James Potter, Ronald Billius Weasley, and the walrus moustache wearing Uncle Vernon Dursley. First up we have Harry James Potter, that boy what lived. This is the HP025 variant with the red shirt torso and a brand new pair of strides. He's exclusive to this set and is worth about $6. We'll ignore the legs which have been used in 4760 minifigures and concentrate on this exclusive torso. It shows Harry wearing a blue t-shirt underneath a red and blue checked shirt. Apart from the fact that the shirt should be undone, this is actually movie accurate. Ron, on the other hand, should be wearing a beige jumper with orange t-shirt. Printing on the back of minifigures wasn't common in 2002, so we have nothing on the back of the shirt, and also no secondary expression on the back of the head. We do of course have Harry's unruly hair, which does the job very nicely. Flesh-coloured faces and hands came to license sets like Harry Potter and Star Wars in 2004. Here we have Harry's face delightfully printed onto a yellow minifigure head. This expression is pretty common and was used on 14 Harry Potter minifigures. I'm a big fan of these early Harry Potter minifigures, and it's great to get an exclusive version in this set. The HP006 Ron Weasley minifigure appeared in two sets, and he's worth about $6. His torso print is not accurate to the movie, and shows him wearing a white shirt underneath a blue shabby jumper. Looks like another Weasley hand-me-down. Again, there's no printing around the back, but we do have the unmistakable Weasley red hair. The facial expression is great, complete with goofy Rupert Grint grin, and we even have eyebrows which match the Weasley hair, not to mention those freckles. This version of the Ronald Weasley head was used in six minifigures. If I had to pick a favourite minifigure from the set, it would be the HP023 Uncle Vernon Dursley. He appeared in two sets and resells for about $7. The brown legs are a very common element, but the torso print is exclusive to Vernon Dursley. 
He's wearing a brown cardigan over a blue and white striped shirt, which presumably hides his massive belly. The facial expression looks a little bemused and kind of sort of looks like Uncle Vernon. We've definitely got the bushy moustache, but apart from that, it could be pretty much anybody. The hair is a reasonable fit for the character and is a stock element in this earth orange colour. At the time of filming, this is the only Vernon Dursley minifigure, but there is another one coming out in summer 2020. So we do have a nice selection of minifigures for this set, but there are clearly a number of missing characters. The 2020 version will fill in some of those gaps, including Petunia Dursley, Dudley Dursley, and Dobby the House Elf. Before I share my thoughts on the 2020 set, I thought it would be fun to take a look at every flying Ford Anglia that LEGO have made so far. These are displayed in chronological order from left to right and cover 2002 through 2018. You'll be familiar with this version, which came from 4728 Escape from Privet Drive in 2002. This was followed up in 2010 with a more edgy version. You'll find this one inside the 4841 Hogwarts Express. Finally for now we have the 2018 version. This came with 75953 Hogwarts Whomping Willow. One notable difference about the three models is that the 2010 version is taller than the other two. Ignoring the tyre width, which is ridiculous on the 2002 version, each of these models is six studs wide. They even each have an opening trunk for Harry Potter's suitcases. I don't recall Harry ever using a suitcase. Just like an elephant, he prefers to use a trunk. The 2010 and 2012 versions are very similarly sized. In fact, the tail lights protrude just a smidge further on the 2018 version. Of the three, the 2002 version has the longest wheelbase. LEGO's taste in rims seems to have changed quite a lot over 16 years. My least favourite appear on the 2002 Ford Anglia. For other reasons, I also dislike the ones on the 2010 version. These are way too small and look like they've been stolen from a Matchbox car. Thankfully that mistake was rectified in 2018 with this version. These look vintage, and the profile of the tyres is just perfect for the death trap that was the Ford Anglia. As a general rule, these models have improved over the years, but I think my favourite has to be the 2018 version. From the images I've seen of the 2020 version so far, the headlights seem to be the only difference between that and the 2018 version. If you truly know LEGO Harry Potter, you may have been screaming at me for the past couple of minutes. I told you there were three versions of the Ford Anglia, but I lied. In 2016, there was a teeny tiny version in the LEGO Dimensions Harry Potter team pack. There was also a teeny tiny micro scale version in the 71043 Hogwarts Castle from 2018. It may be caught up in the arms of the Whomping Willow and consist of only four pieces, but it is still very much a flying Ford Anglia. So that was the old school 4728 Escape from Privet Drive from LEGO Harry Potter. But of course there is a new kid on the block and I promise to share my thoughts. So here goes, it's awesome! So this is 75968 for Privet Drive, one of the new for 2020 sets from LEGO Harry Potter. It's a 797 piece set and retails for 70 US dollars, 65 Great British Pounds, or around 70 Euros depending on where you live in Europe. The box art is similar to the 2018-19 sets and would definitely catch my eye at the LEGO store. It's available on June 1st in Europe, but I'm super frustrated that the release date for the USA is two months later in August. Also frustrating about the USA release is that the 75980 Attack on the Burrow set, which is one I'm particularly looking forward to, is going to be a Target exclusive. Similarly, the buildable Hedwig will be exclusive to the Barnes & Noble bookstore. On the back of the box we get a much closer look at the finished build and it's clear the interior is much more complete and accomplished than the 2002 version we've been reviewing today. The external appearance of 4 Privet Drive looks great and it's a really good recreation of the real thing. The brickwork is the right colour complete with accent bricks and the designers have nailed the European style roofing tiles. We even get the little rain porch over the front door but sadly no garage. I do like the inclusion of the Privet Drive street sign, but it does look like we're going to be dealing with quite a sticker sheet for this set. It's great to see greenery and flowers decorating the front of the house, and this is very much in keeping with the movie set. I also really like the owl post crammed into the letterbox in a reference to Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. Sadly, the door does seem to be a stickered element. Like the 2002 version, we also have an interactive function where the flying Ford Anglia can rip away the bars on Harry's bedroom window. 
The bars are a nice addition and makes this much more like the movie, although Harry's bedroom has shifted to the side of the house instead of being around the back. I'm very pleased to see that Dobby makes an appearance in this set and also a recreation of the fancy dessert. That's what Dobby drops on the head of the wife of Mr Dursley's business associate and of course Harry Potter gets the blame. Inside Four Privet Drive we have a sitting room complete with chimney from which Hogwarts letters are bursting out. I do like the lilac suite of furniture in this room. Shifting to a different picture you can see how the letters come out of the chimney. It looks like we have a slot on the outside to load up 1x2 tiles and a dial to force them out of the fireplace. You'll also notice the cupboard under the stairs complete with movie accurate door vent. Harry's original bedroom can be accessed via a flap on the outside of the house. Like the 2002 version, this works well as a set based on either of the first two movies. Upstairs there is only one room but it is a nice recreation of Dudley's second bedroom where Harry sleeps. Great to see a bed for Dobby to jump up and down on, and even some wizarding wall art which I think is Gryffindor themed. The Flying Ford Anglia seems to be a repeat of the model included with the Hogwarts Whomping Willow set. The only thing that looks different is the headlights which have these smooth one by one round plates instead of studied versions. The 797 piece part count includes 6 minifigures. It's great to see short versions of Ron Weasley and Harry Potter who are wearing the appropriate costume. We also have Petunia Dursley for the first time and an updated Vernon Dursley who looks much more like the character. I'm not so sure about Dudley, he just looks like a generic kid but it is great to have a Dobby minifigure. Also cool is the inclusion of owl figures including a new flying Hedwig. So there you have it, the 75968 4 Privet Drive Set. I think this looks like an absolutely fantastic set and I love the attention to detail making 4 Privet Drive look like the movie version. I also appreciate the inclusion of key moments from the opening sequences of the Philosopher's Stone and Chamber of Secrets movies. It looks great and I can't wait to get my hands on the real thing. So that was set number 4728, Escape from Privet Drive from Lego Harry Potter. At the time of filming this set is 18 years old and it definitely shows its age. The new version for 2020 definitely looks more fun. But I love old school Lego, especially Lego Harry Potter, and I'll always have a soft spot for the original version. The outside looks nothing like Full Privet Drive except for the number 4 near the door, and the interior is even worse. One common theme between the 2002 and 2020 sets is that both try to incorporate elements from the Philosopher's Stone and also the Chamber of Secrets. This version may not have the best Full Privet Drive, and it may not even have the best Ford Anglia. But if it's old school Harry Potter, I love it and it's a great addition to the collection. Speaking of loving it, I really hope you enjoyed this classic Lego Harry Potter restoration, speed build and review video. If you did, a thumbs up is always appreciated and don't forget to subscribe for more Lego Harry Potter goodness. Thanks a million for checking out today's review, stay safe and I'll see you on the next build video.